Hi, everyone. Dr. Elizabeth Bonet here and Dr. Liz. If this is your first time listening, then welcome. I hope you like what you hear. And if you do, please share it with a friend or family member. If you would like to get some free hypnosis files, then that's really easy to do. I offer one to reduce fear and anxiety, another one to increase emotional stability, and a third for a better pregnancy and birth. So you can get those over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com. That's D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. Or you can text the word hypnotize to 444-999. That's the word hypnotize to 444-999. I think it's like such an easy way to join the newsletter. That's why I offer it. Before we go into today's episode, I do need to say the podcast is not a substitute for mental health treatment, nor should it be. If you need psychotherapy or hypnotherapy, please seek treatment from a trained professional. Now, I do do hypnosis all over the world. That's done through Skype or WhatsApp, or sometimes someone has a U.S. phone number or a calling card type thing. Whatever it is, we work it out. But if you'd like to see how to work with me or learn more about me, whether you're local or from afar, you can do that over at my website. That's drlizhypnosis.com. I offer a free 15-minute telephone consultation. So that's a great way to get a sense of what it would be like to work with me and to ask any questions you may have about that. You know, sometimes people decide to fly in and see me and they'll do an intensive couple of days and then they'll vacation here because I am in South Florida, which is really nice most of the year. Fort Lauderdale is right above Miami. So we have beautiful beaches and gorgeous water that's warm to swim in. So people really enjoy that. All right. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hi, everyone. Dr. Liz here. Today's episode is with Joan Sotkin, and she's just wonderful to talk to about money. I had her on the podcast in episode 69, so it's quite a while ago. We're on episode 137 now, and she is a highly sought-after money coach. She runs the website prosperityplace.com, which has all kinds of free as well as paid courses that you can take as well as she runs online groups that you can join. She's also the author of The Search for Connection, A Spiritual Journey to Physical, Emotional, and Financial Health. So our conversation is interesting. You'll learn about why she thinks the law of attraction doesn't work unless you have some of your other financial stuff in order. You'll hear about her journey as well as strategies about how to relieve money anxiety. Now, before we go into the interview, I have another resource for you. This episode is sponsored by Hourglass Healing Arts, which was just recently opened in Wilton Manors, Florida, which is South Florida area, Fort Lauderdale area, by Dr. Crystal Kakalici and Thomas Filacci. They opened this center together, and it's a healing arts clinic that offers acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, medical massage, homeopathy, so all kinds of healing services. They have community healing sessions every second and fourth Wednesday of the month where you can come in and get like a mini treatment and just check them out and see how it feels to be worked on by them. You know, acupuncture, massage, hypnotherapy as well. When you're talking about the healing arts, it's really an energetic connection that's going on there. And so I think it's important to really trust and know the person that's helping you, that's helping move you towards healing. It's our body's natural state to move towards healing, but sometimes we need a little help along the way, for sure, I know I have. So that's what really the healing arts are for. Let's help your body heal. So both of them are just fantastic practitioners. I've known Crystal forever, even before she became a doctor, actually. And when she decided to go and study traditional Chinese medicine, all of us in the play group, that's how I originally knew her, were like, oh my God, that is a perfect fit for you. Like, it's so 
good. She has an incredible amount of knowledge and she truly is a healer, as is Thomas. So that's a good partnership for them. Even if you're not in South Florida, you can schedule a consultation with Crystal and know that you'll be speaking with someone who is educated and ethical and in the right mindset to help you. So you can check them out at hourglasshealingarts.com. They also have an Instagram, hourglass underscore healing underscore arts, as well as a Facebook page, of course. Or you can give them a call, 954-533-8044. That's 954-533-8044. All right, let's jump into our interview. Hi, Joan. Welcome back to the Hypnotize Me podcast. It's so great to be here. Thanks for asking me back. Yes. Well, I absolutely loved our first conversation and I've been meaning to for a while. So I'm finally caught up and I was like, yes, I can have Joan back on the podcast. All right. Yeah. So I want to jump in with some questions about how you see... um, the struggles with money changing for people over their lifetime. So, you know, people say like you need to do your money work, quote unquote, right? But what I see is that that changes through the years. Like as you grow your business, as you become an adult, as you have kids often, as they go through their life changes. So how do you see that in your, your practice, your coaching um, well, it's true. There's a lot of things that I see now that evolve. In other words, you're talking about the evolution of a financial pattern within a person's life. And yes. as, their, you know, as their circumstances change, I mean, a 20-year-old is very different from a 70-year-old. Mm-hmm. And the problem is, from my point of view, that there's no there's no rules that absolutely apply to everybody. And that what you learn as a child about money or as a teenager or as a 20 year old is going to affect your outcomes and whether you have a job or you're trying to build a business. I mean, all the advice that I see online is all about saving X percent of your paycheck well, uh-huh. as entrepreneurs, we don't get paychecks. And, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and and that, that advice just makes no sense to me because, you know, as a single person with one income, doing a business that has all sorts of ups and downs, because most of my work is done online and, and business online has changed dramatically. Yes. So I have to keep changing how I do business, how I perceive business. And in the meantime, I'm getting older. And that mm-hmm. definitely makes a difference. I've been working uh, more with 40-year-olds in my coaching. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I still have people in 50s and 60s. But I see that people in their 40s are still in this financial state of innocence. Mm. especially for entrepreneurs, because you haven't got kicked in the butt yet. You're doing your first business. Everything seems to be working out fine. Mm-hmm. Well, nine times out of 10, life is going gonna, is gonna to hit you in a way that you don't expect. When you read biographies of very successful people, particularly entrepreneurs, uh-huh. there's almost always a, a bankruptcy in the story. True. It's like, you know, so so when you're 40 and bringing in six figures, seven figures, whatever it is, that's just where you are today. Uh-huh. That doesn't mean how it's going to be in the future, particularly since so many people who are in business for themselves, and I was I, I was guilty of this when I was in my 40s, they aren't necessarily doing a great job of keeping track of their money. Uh huh. Yeah, it's two different skills, really. Yeah, absolutely. And when I ha- I had a bi- business in the, in the nineteen eighties, so that was in my forties, 
and it it grew very quickly. I I thought I knew what I was doing. I was keeping track of my money, but I had no idea about cash flow management. Mm. No one ever said to me, Joan, cash flow management. Mm -hmm. So when I had $50,000 a month in today's money coming in, oh, I just bought a lot of crystals because that was the basic business. I had the best collection ever, but I had never learned in my younger years how to save money. Mm. And, and so for me, it was what can I buy, which is how a lot of people think, oh, I want to make all this money so I can buy X, Y, Z, yeah. so I can go traveling, so, and, and I'll start saving later. I, I never saw the advantage of saving because my parents never saved any money. And somehow they managed to get uh, to their 70s and 80s. My mother was almost 90. Mm -hmm. And somehow it all worked out. And I was very into the law of attraction kind of stuff, even mm -hmm. though that, that wasn't what was being taught at the time. But it was, you know, get your get everything, your thoughts, beliefs, emotions in the right place, and the money will come in. Yes. Well, that's BS. If you don't have <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Because that's still being taught. I know, but they don't say that. Now, it's true if you have the financial skills and the business skills to go with it. Ah. If you don't know how to manage cash flow, uh -huh. I don't care how much money you have coming in if you don't know how to manage it. And people say, well, I don't pay attention to my money. My bookkeeper does. Mm. I can't tell you how many stories I heard of bookkeepers who screwed up the people they were working for. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, I if, mean, really big. It can get really bad, like illegal type of stuff. But it can oh, also just be on the on a day-to-day -day level that doesn't then leave the person um, solvent at the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What you have to be able to do is make good financial decisions. And what's involved in that is not only your understanding cash flow management, but how you make decisions. I mean, this is the stuff I get into, which is where who you are and your expectations for yourself mm -hmm. are definitely going to affect the decisions you make. Yes. Your decisions are affected by your thoughts, beliefs, and emotions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every, every decision has an emotional component. Mm -hmm. and you have a need for disappointment. Well, when you're 45 or 50, you're going to be disappointed because that's your habit. Mm. Hey, Dr. Liz here. And just a quick reminder, if you are getting trapped in a feeling, anxiety, depression, or some kind of problem where it starts to overwhelm your life and affect every part of your life, your work, your business, your relationships, your parenting even. What I specialize in is emotional healing so that you feel transformed, so that you feel fundamental well-being as you move through your life and that you release old negative self-concepts about yourself that are holding you back from truly living the life that you're meant to live. A happy life, one filled with joy and peacefulness and centeredness and empowerment so that you can move through life feeling like, okay, I have this. I've got it. This is manageable. I'm a good person. I have incredible self-worth. All of those good benefits come from hypnosis. So if that is something you need or want, you can schedule a free consultation over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com. All right, back to our episode. And it, this is what really gets to me with business coaches and financial coaches. I mean, I can give you all the rules for taking care of your money. Uh -huh. But if you're eating crap and not getting enough sleep and never exercise and, and your moods are kind of, uh, you know, I mean, that's going to affect your decisions. Yes. And yeah. it's your ability to make decent decisions that are going to affect your business and financial health ah. and anything in life, 
Well, and you know, how many people get into wrong relationships? Yes. <laughs> they don't just pop into your life. No. Make a decision to get into them. Or to so, continue. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. I had, was talking to someone the other day and he had been married for 20 years and said, I should have gotten out of there 10 years early. And, uh-huh. <laughs> and he's just gotten involved in another relationship that didn't work out. And I said, you need a purpose. You know, if, if having a good relationship is your only purpose, it, it's not going to work because your habit is not having good. This is fourth relationship. Yes. He had three marriages and he was going to get married again. Everybody, all his friends said, don't get married. Don't get married. Fortunately, he didn't. Uh-huh. So if you don't have good critical thinking capacity, mm-hmm. if you tend to be dogmatic, or only only want to deal with people who agree with you. These are all things that are going to affect your decisions. Mm -hmm. So when you make a spending decision, all of that stuff is in there. Oh, yes. Right. I came from a debting family. My father was a compulsive debtor, and he eventually went bankrupt, and I went bankrupt because, you know, you follow your parents' patterns. And I had to really understand how I was making my financial decisions. And it took years to make the changes. Remember, there's nothing wrong with you that needs fixing. That is my basic theory. I understand you're a psychologist and people come to you to fix things. Yes. I think there's nothing wrong with you that needs fixing. You just have habits that developed early in childhood. And if, yeah. you, and if you understand how to change those habits, then you can move in a new direction, which is basically what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. It's slightly different terminology, but I would agree with you. We come into the world like perfect, whole, and complete, right? That's how we come in. And then because of circumstances that happen and our parenting and all kinds of different stuff, sometimes it's not parenting that's a, a teacher who was a jerk to you or a friend or kids, all kinds of stuff can happen, then you develop habits. Or your genes. Yeah, even genes. And we know enough about epigenetics now, though, that we can significantly change the expression of those genes, changeable all through our life. It's really pretty amazing, the science behind it. Right now, we're at the beginning of the understanding of all of the things you and I are talking about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I still, if I go to a, an allopathic doctor, a regular doctor, they have no idea how to treat me because I've been on this, um, this alternative <laughs> path for so long. Uh-huh. And I have a different way of looking at life. Mm-hmm. And the people who say save 10% of your head, save, you know, where they, where they give you these financial instructions, um, it has nothing to do with the person. Mm -hmm. And what they expect of life and what they expect of themselves. Absolutely. Well, here's something interesting. I work with a a number of people who have plenty of money. Uh And when they come to me, they say, my problem is it never feels like enough. Yeah, right. So if you have a couple million dollars socked uh, away and it still feels like not enough, what's going to happen to the person (laughs) (laughs) Things knocked away. Now, my goal, what life teaches us in so many ways, you know, I live a kind of alternative life. I'm not married. I, although I tried it twice and I knew fairly soon that that wasn't for me, Uh (laughs) not my idea of a good time. And um, I didn't want children and I've not never had children. So I get to do things that most people don't get to do. When I gave away everything I owned, even though I had no money and I wandered for a number of years, I mean, the lessons I've had to learn are different. So I'm not asking anyone to, you know, when people say, well, I did it and you can do it too. You can't give away everything you own. (laughs) That's not going to work. I couldn't do it again. You know, we each have a path. Yes. And finding what's right for me has taken a long time. But one of the things I wanted to accomplish was to never worry about money, no matter what my bank account said. 
Mm -hmm. And I, that's what I asked for. And I got many chances when it got down to practically nothing Mm -hmm. to really test it. But because I've learned such incredible money management skills and cash flow management, I see that it's up to me to make it last when it, you know, I mean, I, I have to make decisions every day. How much do I spend? How much do I save? How much do I put aside? It's, it's learning how to make those decisions. And for people who say, I don't worry about money, what they're, what they often mean is I don't pay attention to my money. And it's like expecting to be healthy all your life when you're eating junk. Yeah. Uh, you so know. Let me ask you, how did you practice not worrying about money regardless of what was in your bank account? Like what did you Good do? question. Do? Okay. Okay. So I recognized that if I'm afraid of something in the future, I'm making up a story. Mm-hmm. Because my amygdala, I, I started studying brain science a while back. And the thing in my brain that's designed to keep me safe hates uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So if I don't know, and as an entrepreneur, any of you who are out there as entrepreneurs, the main skill you have to learn is how to deal with uncertainty because your brain is going to tell you it's dangerous and you're going to have a fear response. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a fear response, you cannot make good decisions. That's just brain science. Yes. So, so I realized that if I was worried about what was, what was going to happen to me because my money was going to run out, which was something I was imagining, it wasn't true in the moment. So there are two things I did. First of all, the minute I would start worrying, I would say, is everything okay today? Mm-hmm. Do I have enough to eat? Do I have a place to stay? Mm-hmm. Now, when I was wandering around, I didn't always have enough to eat. So I figured I was learning how to fast. In other words, <laughs> yeah, right. right. There's always another way of looking at it. Yes. So I realized, you know, is everything okay today? I have run out of money. So I couldn't say, have you ever run out of money? Mm-hmm. And, and I was in fact homeless when I gave everything away. I was just not calling it homeless. I was calling it my spiritual journey. Yes. So I knew that that had happened. So I would say, well, what's the chances of that happening again? I would look at it from a different point of view. And then I would say to myself, a large sum of money from an unexpected source. Because if I'm making up a story, that's a much better story to make up. And my brain would light up because your subconscious doesn't understand time. Mm -hmm. And my brain would light up and I would start thinking about all the possible ways that money could, could could show up. And then I'd say to myself, but it's unexpected. So whatever I'm thinking about is not true. <laughs> okay, great. I love that phrase. I actually use it all the time, not just for myself, but yeah. for people, clients, friends, I tell them like, why not just say to yourself a large sum of money from an unexpected source? And they always look at me like, what? I'm like, let's just try it. And yeah, it feels a lot better, right? It really does. Make up a better story Uh because if you look at people's lives, there are people who have this endless series of difficult people in their lives and things that happen to them. This woman stopped me the other day who I hadn't seen in a long time. And I I, I had had my car broken into a dog park and my wallet and my phone. This was after so many things in my house had aged out. And so I was just seeing it as I was going through it, getting ready for something new. Mm -hmm. Well, she was on her way someplace and had all her possessions in her car that were stolen. Mm -hmm. And then I had to hear about the next story and the next story and the next story. Well, when is she going to say, why, why am I creating this? Why, why do I need this? That's the other thing. Okay. You know, I have certain sayings that keep me sane. Like, there's no such thing as good or bad. There only is what is. 
Okay. So if you if something happens to you and you see it as bad, well, then it's bad. It's like when my car was broken into and I had to get new bank accounts. And I mean, it took me months to work through everything. But when I got the new bank accounts, it's like, oh, I've got all new numbers. You yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> the energy of my life is changing. And as it worked out, because I've been going through this process for a couple of years, Suddenly, when I felt like I had finally reached that point where I wanted to reach, everything started opening up. Mm -hmm. and, and I put together this group. First, it was supposed to be an accountability group, and then that didn't feel quite right. And I, I have this problem. I can't plan things in advance. Uh -huh. I have to try something and then let it evolve. Yeah. And I don't fight that. I don't fight that because every time I've tried to plan everything in advance, it never works out. I've got to <laughs> change it. <laughs> so why not just... A, you've made a decision about how to think about that. Like, this is my process. And so yes. this is how I go about things. And there's nothing wrong with this. This isn't actually a problem. It's right. my it's, process. You know, it's, just, it's my process. Yeah. And you have to have a lot of courage to do that. Yes. Because you don't, you don't know what's next. Mm -hmm. So I have faith. My faith isn't that God's going to save me or that some angel's going to come along and drop something in my lap. Um, I have faith that if I follow my inner voice, everything's going to work out okay. Mm. Okay doesn't mean everything's comfortable or that I'm going to absolutely get what I think I want. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to get what's going to allow me to become who I'm becoming. Mm, beautiful. That's why I don't see anything as bad. Whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm going through today is what I need to become who I'm becoming. Mm. Now, I believe that we're going into a period of great chaos. I know that as a teacher and helper, uh, you know, we call it a coach. You know, my goal is to serve people. That in order for me to help people through the chaos, I have to be totally peaceful. Mm. Because I can't teach you how to be stress free unless I am. Yes. And so that's been in the back of my mind. Because when I was going through that give everything away, I uh -huh. was, I, this was in, in the 1970s. I started meditating in 1972. Mm -hmm. And in 1976, about, I was in meditation and I heard we're going into a period of great chaos. Um, many people will leave the planet. The chaos in the Middle East will get so bad, people would say, How would a benevolent God allow this to happen? But people are being trained to be points of light in the midst of the chaos. Huh. So, mm -hmm. in order to be help to them, I can't be scared and worried. Yes. My first spiritual teacher in 1972, the guy who taught me how to meditate, said worrying is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, what a concept. Mm -hmm. Worrying is a waste of time. And so it was in the 1970s that I decided to, to learn how to stop worrying. It took a long time. I didn't know about brain science and, you yeah. know, I didn't know. And I, so I had to figure out how to do it. It is hard. I try to practice that myself. Right. And it takes time. It takes time. It takes practice. It, yes. it takes releasing. And you get pushback from people. I have yeah. my, the blue haired teen that I have yes. a 17 year old leaving for college in like uh, 15 days or something. <laughs> who, used to be, who used to be the pink haired teen. Yes. The pink -haired teen. <laughs> and my husband said to me, he said, you know, you're pretty happy. I, I think you're, you're going to have it hit you later. Right. Like, and I said to him, I said, look, it's going back to the decisions. I said, you know, it's not that I don't picture crying at the airport. I do. She's, she's flying off to Italy. She's not just going a couple hours away. And I said, I do, but I make decisions about how I feel and what state that I like to exist in. And for now, I think the better state is to be really excited for her. And it makes me feel better. And I think it helps her and to lend her that confidence instead of 
being in the fear, worry, sadness state, right? Well, you, so, you said something important. You said, I decide how I want to feel. Mm-hmm. Most people don't realize they have that choice. Correct. Yes. Okay. And, and it's a matter of habits. What, however you respond to a particular situation is a habit. And if that response is fear, uncertainty, anger, whatever that is, that's a habit. And you have the ability to say to yourself, what would I rather be feeling? Yes. And when I teach this to people, I say, okay, this is how I have them learn how to change their money habits. Uh When you look at your bank balance and you say to yourself, oh my God, I haven't got enough. I, I, I'm so ashamed of where I am. I, everybody makes more money than me. That has nothing to do with the money. Yeah. That has to do with what you're feeling. Yes. So, so when, you're, when you're all contracted because you're looking at your money and you're feeling really uncomfortable, you say to yourself, what am I feeling? Mm-hmm. When have I felt it before? Mm-hmm. And you'll start remembering all those times way back to t- childhood when you felt tight and angry, when you were two years old and they weren't letting you do what you wanted to do, and you felt trapped and uncomfortable. And, and if you're in debt, you're feeling trapped. Well, where does that come from? It has nothing to do with the debt. It has to do with what you're bringing to the debt. Yes. Okay, what am I feeling? What have I felt it before? What would I rather be feeling? Yeah. And do I know how to feel that? Yes. And do I have, I would say, do I know how to feel that goes with, do I have the skills to change it? Oh, yes. Yeah. But, but first, the question is, so many people I find have a dissatisfaction habit. Uh-huh. They're never satisfied with where they are, where their money is, what their kids are doing. I mean, they're just not satisfied. Mm-hmm. So I'll say, do you know how to feel satisfied? And it's amazing how many people say to me, no, I've never been satisfied. Ah, yeah. Okay. So I'll say, were you satisfied when your kids were born? Mm-hmm. And if they have kids nine out of 10 times, they'll say, yes, I was satisfied. Occasionally I get a no. Yeah. I wanted a boy and I got a girl. I wanted a girl and I got a boy. Yeah. <laughs> Something went wrong with the birth or, yeah. Uh-huh. Are you satisfied? Because... You have to find a moment in your life when you were satisfied. Did, what, did it come from going to the ocean, watching a bird? In other words, if you've never felt satisfied, mm-hmm. then you will never be satisfied mm-hmm. because you don't know how to feel that. So it becomes a process of practicing feeling satisfied. Yeah building new neural pathways in your brain Mm -hmm. so that you teach your brain how to respond with satisfaction. Now, people are afraid if I'm satisfied, I'll never have more than I have now. Ah. The paradox is the more satisfied you are, the more you'll be able to draw in those things that keep you satisfied. Yeah. As long as you're addicted to dissatisfaction, you're going to get lots of opportunities to feel that. Yeah. Oh, that is a real paradox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. And and if you've always been dissatisfied and you want to be satisfied, your amygdala is going to tell you it's dangerous because you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Yes. And I I think it's helpful too to give that amygdala something to do. So, you know, you're basically giving it something to do when you say a large sum of money from an unexpected source, right? And recently I heard, I think it's Wayne Dyer's Nine Principles of Something. (laughs) <laughs> I'm off all the titles, but he was saying, like when you're thinking about money and you have this feeling of not having enough or whatever, think about what is it you want that money to create in your life? Because really okay. that's what it is, right? Like right. something underneath money's just a tool. People come to me for coaching from financial advisors. And uh-huh. so recently there was this woman who came to me, she was driving her financial advisor 
nuts. Mm -hmm. She had recently retired. Uh, she was only 59 years old and she was so afraid of losing her, of what she, we had because the yeah. volatility of the market causes a lot of fear. Right. So our first conversation where we were just finding out if it was a match and I knew this story within 10 minutes, I said to her, so what were your abandonment stories? Mm. In other words, I could tell from the way she was obsessing about yeah. losing her money and not creating any other possibilities Yes, that she was dealing with her feelings of abandonment. And she had a alcoholic father and an narcissistic mother. And she, yeah. so she had a right to have an abandonment habit, right? Yes. So, yeah. But also <laughs> an opportunity to work through that, to change that. Uh, oh, and she's been going to therapy. So I said to her, well, what would you like to be doing in, with the next part of your life? Yeah. And it, it took about an hour for her to get to really understand how many, I, I started, you know, I, it was clear she was very talented. And I just started listing opportunities that were sitting there waiting for her to grab them. Mm -hmm. Because of her fear, remember, fear makes you stupid. Because of her fear, she had no idea how to get an idea about something new in the future, amygdala telling you it's dangerous. Right. And she was paralyzed. Uh -huh. So she just, she just needed encouragement to try something different. And within two months, her life totally turned around. Oh, I bet. I bet. When you start to focus on what you do want to create, that's a creative process right there. Exactly. And lives do change. So for her, it's like, okay, she wanted money to create a sense of what? Security? That she's not and, in she, and she said to me, well, I need more money. Now, that's something I hear from a lot of people. So I said to her, how much? Uh -huh. Because people don't ask themselves that question. They just say, I need more money. Right. Well, how much do you need? And what plans can you make to, to get that amount? That. Yes. Yeah. You know, once she decided what she wanted to try, and I assured her that whatever she tries probably is not it, but it's going to help her become who she's becoming. Yeah. Yeah, because she can't imagine at 59 who she's going to be at 69. Yeah. Yeah, that's the advantage of being in my late 70s is I've seen what we were talking about in the beginning, this evolution. Yes. And it's not just a, a financial evolution. It's an emotional evolution. It's a self-concept evolution. People who are stuck are stuck in their sense of who they are that developed when they were two yes. or three, okay? So, and they have no idea how to create a new identity, a new self-concept. And they spend most of their life protecting their old identity, which is a waste of time. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. We know now, that happiness goes along with someone's ability to change and evolve and adapt their flexibility. Right. And you're talking right. about emotional flexibility. Right. And you have to remember your amygdala is not working for you to change. Right. It's almost like you have to become adapted. It's like, if I don't change fairly often, I feel stuck because you know, my habit has become change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the opposite <laughs> end of the scale, right? <laughs> Right. And he, now Joni Sotkin hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the person who my persona, my personality, the so many elements of who I am were the same when I was tiny little as they are now. Mm -hmm. And I was a re rebellious from the very beginning. And I've been a talker all my life. I say when the, when the doctor slapped me, when I came out, I probably did five minutes. Because uh, <laughs> I'm a talker, right? And so there's certain things that don't change. What, what's important with what you said is that we have choices. Mm -hmm. I have this new saying I've been using, whatever you believe is true is true. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like what's true, change what you believe is true. Yes. We have this 
infinite number of choices as to what we believe is true, I can believe that a large sum of money from an unexpected source is going to come my way. And so during the day, I'm in this healthy state of anticipation, wondering Mm -hmm. who's going to contact me to let me know that I'm getting a hundred thousand (laughs) dollars. Now, fantastic. Now I have used up my disappointment enough to not be a disappointment when it doesn't come by the end of the day. Yeah. I, just have, I just have more hope for the future. The way to live is to not spend time in the past, to be in the present and have hopes for the future. Mm-hmm. Is everything okay today? Do I have enough to eat? Do I have a place to stay? Now, since every one of you who's listening to this has a cell phone and a computer, and you've got enough. Mm -hmm. You've got enough to survive. And any feeling of not enough is you saying, I'm not enough. I mean, I have a client who just told me recently that her, I I asked what what she wants to work on. She said, well, I'm only bringing in $250,000 a a year. Wow. And she sees that as a big problem. Well, mm, and she thought that she was feeling enough (laughs) about herself. And after enough talking, we got to the fact that there really was a part of herself that felt that she would never measure up. Mm. And I think that people are afraid to listen to their intuition, to that inner voice that tells them what they need, what they need, not what mommy thinks they need or friend thinks they need. Mm -hmm. What do you need to become who you're becoming? And if you listen to that voice, not everything is going to work out. Because sometimes you have to find out what you're not before you find out what you are. Yes. I had to find out that I was not meant to be married and have children. Mm -hmm. But I was taught you're supposed to get married and have children. I was born in 1940. It's not like women were taught, you know, go be independent, have a business. (laughs) It's it's a different era, right? right? And so I tried what they told me I was supposed to do. And it made no sense to me. Mm -hmm. And so I I think that is an important point because people get it stuck in their head or they develop a habit that whatever they try has to be successful or has to look this way or be that way. And it's like any entrepreneur who's been around the block at least a little will tell you, you have to try things and assume that some of them are going to fail, that they're not going to be a good fit. There's no way to know that unless you try it. And that happens on all kinds of levels. So you asked the question up front about the financial evolution that people mm-hmm. have to go through. And there's no way to do it other than through experience. Yes. And yes. if you understand that what's happening is not good or bad, it's just what's happening and whatever you're going through is helping you become who you're becoming, then you don't have to judge yourself or what's happening. So that's a wonderful place, I think, to wrap up our interview today. Can you tell people where to find you if they'd like to work with you? I'm so easy to find. I'm the only Joan Sotkin in the entire world. (laughs) (laughs) Are you really? Yes, there's no wow. no other Joan Sotkin. And my main site is prosperityplace.com, and that leads to everything. Wonderful. Joan has some really good free courses over there, some excellent paid courses over there. I really encourage you to go give it a look and also check out one of her groups. She does work very intuitively and you have a group starting soon. I'm not quite sure when this is going to air, but it's ongoing now and people just they can join at any time this is different from the other groups i've done where there was a 6 week or a 12 oh. week thing this is an ongoing uh called intention plus action you know we use the intu- intuition and the inner stuff to create the intention but then you have to plan how you're going to get there <laughs> so. yeah so check out one of her groups and her podcast so your your podcast is the prosperity 
The Prosperity Show. The Prosperity Show. I listen to it all the time, but like I said, <laughs> I'm awful with titles. So it's, I, I've, I've done 358 episodes, which is amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. <laughs> yes. If you've been podcasting for any length of time, you will know how amazing that is. <laughs> it is. So again, thank you so much. And thank you. This is wonderful. truly enjoying today's episode. Remember that you can get free hypnosis downloads over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. I work all over the world doing hypnosis. So if you're interested in working with me, please schedule a free consultation over at my website and we'll see what your goals are and if I can be of service to you in helping you reach them. Finally, if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the podcast or tell a friend. That way, more and more people learn about the power of hypnosis. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Peace.